All right, fantastic. And with that, we will begin. So thank you everyone for joining our webinar event, which is the 2024 Marketing Budget Planning Guide. I will quickly th hand things off to Nicole to kick us off. Thanks, Max. Um, hi, everyone. So here we are in September, um, and that's quite often the time that everyone starts to think and plan for next year. So really, our hope today is to help you do that and start to think about kind of what you should be planning for, maybe how to frame marketing budgets and um, give sort of a useful foundation um, in, in looking at next year. Just a quick overview um, for those who don't know who we are. We are the EGC Group. Um, we're a full service agency here in New York, although we've got team members everywhere, including Max, who's coming in from Miami. Um, so we are full service in terms of we do everything from research um, of all sorts to media planning to digital execution, social media, video, creative. Um, we do it all. We're really kind of the your outsourced marketing partner um, in all things when you need to grow a brand or a business. We also do, and we're going to share a little bit more about this. We've built a proprietary tool called the EGC Edge, which is our media platform that gives marketers a little bit of a lens into what the competitors are doing, what they're spending in media. It's an unbelievable um, piece of technology. I think Chris is gonna share a little bit more about it, um, but happy to give anyone a demo uh, you know, after, after this webinar. But uh, thanks for joining. And I'm gonna kick it back to Max. All right, fantastic. This is where we introduce uh, everyone on this call. <laughs> so hello, everyone. My name is Max Ross, and I am a digital marketing manager at EGC. Um, I am also an AI lead. I will kick things off to Christina. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm Christina Body, director of social media here at EGC Group, and I just help oversee content strategy and a little bit of PR, and I'll kick it off to Chris. Hey, everyone. Chris Canadeo, Director of Analytics here at EGC Group, overseeing and executing all things data, reporting, getting ROI for your business goals, um, and the list goes on and on. And I will kick to Nicole. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so I am um, CEO of EGC Group. Happy to be here. Um, so I think we can just dive straight in. Um, I'm going to kick over to Max, but I think the, you know, a lot of people have been asking me kind of what, you know, what does next year look like? Um, are people spending more, spending less? Um, and interestingly, everyone seems to be doubling down uh, going into next year. Um, there's a, a lot of global forecasts that are showing ad spend actually increasing and is going to globally hit a trillion dollars next year for the first time. So um, although there's some market uncertainties, people are still um, investing and reinvesting into marketing. And I'll, I'll kick it over to Max. For more. So I'm definitely going to echo a Nicole sentiment. So clients are expecting more from their marketing spend than ever before. Um, return on advertising spend in particular is taking the front seat as one of the top metrics that clients are focusing on. But it's important to note that despite the client emphasis on getting these best returns, marketing spend is only forecasted to increase. I mean, at first glance, this might seem a bit paradoxical. You know, why would clients be willing to spend more when they're more mindful than ever about getting their results? And the answer to this question is, is that marketing spending continues to work and drive real growth for our clients. So we'll touch on the most uh, successful uh, marketing strategies uh, and levers for growth right later in this presentation. But first we'll discuss some of the factors which have consumers watching their wallets a little more. Uh, so these include firstly, growth of the digital consumer market or rather the unprecedented growth of this. So this can most likely be attributed to the new forms of media like TikTok, which are gathering you know, billions of monthly active users and more entrance into this wildly popular space 
um, is increasing pop uh, is increasing competition, uh, which may make it harder for some brands to establish their digital footprint. Secondly, we have concerns about a looming recession. Uh, we know that cash and funding are harder to get uh, than ever nowadays, most likely due to the increase in interest rate hikes. Um, thirdly, we have the expansion of artificial intelligence in the workforce, and we will touch on this later in our presentation. Um, however, AI tools have supercharged people's workflows, allowing them to pump out more content than ever. Um, however, as more users adopt this technology, competition does increase. So it's really important to know how to use these tools effectively, which we do. <laughs> and lastly, we have the 2024 uh, U.S. presidential election, which is obviously, you know, it may cause some macroeconomic uh, factors to occur. So again, you know, despite these market and economic headwinds, um, ad spending is only forecasted to increase. As Nicole said, it's going to reach a trillion dollars. Um, in 2023 in particular, um, a recent study by Gartner said that digital ad spending is going to cross $600 billion, which is actually more than the GDP of Sweden. Um, however, non-digital advertising too is also uh, expected to perform very well, um, is going to reach a record figure of $85 billion um, by the end of 2024. So time is going by very quickly. Uh, there are only several months left in uh, 2023. So we really suggest that the time to take action um, is now. Um, and with this growth in mind, we're going to uh, pass things on to Nicole. Yeah, so so one of the things that we get asked often is how to even just go about marketing budgeting. Um, and so we just kind of break down the different structures to think about, you know, one, you could look spe just specifically at competitive benchmarking. So that's looking to see what your competitors are spending and use that as, as a gauge. And that's where the EGC edge um, is really a useful tool because it tells you kind of directionally, here's where your competitors are spending and here's largely what you'd need to be somewhat competitive in market. Um, and this is really good when you are trying to steal share from a competitor, maybe you're the underdog to a much bigger brand, and you want to look to see, okay, where are they, and where are the kind of open white spaces where, where we can win. So one is competitive benchmarking, and sometimes it's a, it's a mix of all these things. Um, largely, we see the majority of our clients um, look at marketing spend as a percentage of total revenue. And the magic question is, well, what should that percentage be? Um, you know, the the baseline kind of minimum that we recommend is 10%. Um, certainly 20% is more standard. Um, but if you're a new brand, if you're a new category entrant, if you're really trying to overtake a competitor, um, that budget may even be higher than the 10 to 20% range. Um, of course, it has to all fit in with what's comfortable and profitable and going to give you return on investment. Um, but we do know and work with brands that have to kind of double down to steal market share. Um, next, a lot of our performance marketing clients look at everything as a cost per acquisition. Um, and we work with clients to really build out that math, meaning let's, you know, together build out kind of what the comfortable lifetime value of a customer is, and then really what could we afford to spend to gain that customer? And this is a really useful exercise because um, at the end of the day, it's just math-based and it's, you know, say, you know, your lifetime value of your customer is say $500, $3,000, and then we can back into what should we comfortably be spending to get a new customer? Um, next is goal-driven. So we do have um, clients that, you know, are really just looking at one kind of big revenue goal or one big market share goal. And we're kind of backing out a marketing budget based on that. And then in some cases, and this does happen where budgets are kind of handed down to say a marketing director, or if you're 
um, you're just given a fixed marketing budget to work with, um, you know, that's something that we help with too, where we're working with clients that said, look, I was given this budget to spend and let's allocate it together. And that's okay. And we could still do those other kind of like tactics where, okay, this is your given marketing budget. What should we be modeling from a cost per acquisition standpoint? So um, these are kind of like the general approaches and how to think about marketing budget planning. Um, and it often is a is a variety of all these things, looking at competitors, where are they spending, doing that goal-driven math, and also fitting a marketing budget into a larger picture. The one watch out that we have when um, doing that kind of marketing budget allocation is to really like think about what should be considered in a marketing budget and maybe some things that should be considered out of a sales budget or out of technology budget. Um, sometimes marketing budgets are the first to get chipped away at and things like investments in tech platforms or even um, investments in CRM platforms come out of a marketing budget when really you might want to advocate for those to be out of a sales budget or some other place. So, um, you know, I'm going to kick over to Max, but these are kind of just the, the broad strokes, the different ways to think about marketing uh, budget planning. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. So now we'll discuss our top five marketing uh, planning considerations uh, for 2024. And firstly, uh, we expect big ideas to matter more. So what does this exactly mean? Um, so the rise in AI use is going to allow for your competitors to pump out more content than ever before. Um, and as we said previously, data suggests that agencies who are using AI tools can actually produce up to three times more content than agencies who are not using these tools. And a trained AI could put together, you know, complex words and images in just seconds using, you know, huge data sets. Um, and no matter how hard we try, humans really can't replicate uh, the sufficiency of machines at scale. Um, but does this mean that the machines are going to take over? Well, no, not exactly. So as the stat says here, although 73% of marketers use AI to some extent, only 33% apply this technology to generate ideas. And the potential in using AI is to expand original thinking and inspire these big ideas. And it could really do this in two ways. So firstly, uh, AI could step in as the go-to helper for handling perhaps more routine work, um, allowing creatives more freedom to practice their skills and think in that imaginatively and come up with these greater concepts. Um, and the goal here is for humans and agencies to be the true creative thinkers while the machines can handle some of the details. Secondly, AI can generate concepts that humans may not think of immediately um, or perhaps even never. And AI can serve as a way to uh, serve as inspiration and jolt us out of maybe repetitive or routine patterns, um, allowing us to produce work that is original. Um, again, we could see that since February 2022, uh, web searches related to AI content are increasing by 900%. So people are definitely taking uh, notice. And to truly stand out in the AI age, you need an agency which can use these tools both effectively and responsibly. And I will pass things over to Christina. All right. So the creator economy continues. Creators have been for the past few years and will be such a key part in your marketing strategy or should be a key part in your marketing strategy. And as you can see, the creator economy is expected to generate $75 billion in 2024. So creators are just such a great way to tell your brand's story through someone else's voice to build trust and authenticity in your brand and to really help drive your brand's st story and message without the big high production costs of a content shoot or um, a high level commercial or something like that. This is a great way to incorporate fresh new content and faces into your strategy. And creators can include anything from influencers to ambassadors to even in-house content studio creators. That's something that we offer here 
at EGC Group. And that's just a great way to include some great UGC style content, which just adds that lifestyle element to your brand. Um, again, without creating those big commercial style videos, um, it's just a great way to tell a compelling story on a lower budget. And we have a great case study for this from Jovia Financial. Um, they recently tasked our team to just help grow awareness and reach on both Instagram and TikTok. So our strategy was to partner with both local and national creators who would just help communicate the importance of financial literacy in both a fun and engaging way. And as you can see, um, since launching this campaign, we've, we've had some really astounding um, increases in engagements, impressions. So three times higher in a three times higher increase in impressions, over 500% increase in engagements, 17% increase in follower growth, and then a crazy almost 7,000% increase in video views. And we'll be talking about video views more in a few slides, but really great to see more video views and to increase that over time, especially le leading into 2024. I'll kick it to Nicole. Yeah, and so one other kind of key trend is just looking at media investments as a portfolio. So the same way that financial planners look at your financial portfolio, this is really the approach our team has been taking, um, being slightly media agnostic to really just look at a portfolio of spend and shifting things based on what's really giving the most ROI. Um, we do see continued increases in spend and also continued increases in cost per clicks with both Google and Meta. So both Google and Meta are subject to inflation, just like anything else. And we have seen that come through in um, cost per clicks and, and spend. Um, we do think this will continue going into next year. Um, in some categories, you know, it's become more and more competitive and marketers have to do more and be more creative. Um, I think the one thing to, one thing to take away from this session is, you know, when you're advocating for your marketing budget to remind your stakeholders that marketing budgets are subject to inflation too. And each marketing dollar is you know, could potentially uh, buy less. So we really have to work harder, be more creative and, you know, work with the partners at the agency to make media more impactful. Now over to Max. Oh, sorry, Chris, I'll have you take the first, uh, <laughs> the media optimization point. Sure. Yeah, we do. Um, so, yeah, when it comes to AI and media optimization, it's still, I would say, in the very, very early stages of development. So we've already had access to AI-supported optimization tools, such as Google Analytics, Google AdWords, Google Performance Max. Meta has also jumped on the bandwagon for AI-empowered tech stacks, tools, getting a better understanding of who you are sending ads to as it relates to general audience development and really building a relationship um, with potential customers through these targeted ads. As far as where the AI media landscape is headed, it will be rooted primarily in audience development. So it's more so kind of getting content creation to match the exact mediums that you are sending ads through. So um, will there be a day where you can just simply plug in a media plan and ask a new AI tool, what are your thoughts, what needs to get optimized? Yes, we will eventually reach that point. Uh, but that point really isn't something as far as ease of use that will happen in the near future. It will still require personnel, expertise, understanding the landscape, especially for those high level, high touch channels um, that do provide broader reach and that are really a stick to a full funnel media plan. So um, 
In short, yes, AI is going to have a dramatic impact on the media planning industry. Um, but as of right now, the best ways to take advantage of AI is to utilize the services of Google and Meta that have been around for so long, as well as to kind of save hours and hours with your agency on on developing content through AI tools um, and using it in, in different matters that are more kind of fully established. So I can also take the second point. Um, as far as AI-supported um, pipelines, so again, it, the, the trick is here is, is really the, um, the chat and the responses and also um, getting that personalization when clients kind of speak to their potential customers, but also the AI watchouts when it comes to um, potential misinformation. So chatbots are, again, an a easy way to get your website to really speak to different consumers that are possibly interested. Um, but the security of, of these kind of chatbots and, and tech-enabled chat rooms um, are susceptible to cyber attacks um, and also are, are imperfect. So um, LLM such as ChatGPT can be layered on now to a lot of different chatbots. I know um, for some of our clients who use HubSpot um, with their chat-enabled technology, that'll happen in the near future that you can kind of have um, a bot that runs for you and, and has the conversations with kind of greater lingu ling linguistic flow, so to speak, than just kind of the submit a prompt and then get these cut and paste answers. Um, but this is a double-edged sword because it will definitely open up um, the floodgates to having misinformation if the chatbot is really thinking on its own. Um, so it really comes down to understanding your business. And if you get a serious influx of different responses via chatbots. Um, perhaps this will be a superior method to have AI kind of take over a lot of the conversation. Um, but if leads come in and, and are much more kind of customized from different asks, then perhaps having someone monitor the chatbot more closely would be of best interest um, to your business. All right. I told you we'd come back to video and um, just wanted to speak to the fact that UGC actually has an incredible content studio that really is one of my favorite areas in the office. Um, we've shot everything from high production commercials in the space to interviews, podcasts, as well as social videos like recipes. Um, and something really important currently and especially going into 2024 is being able to shoot vertical content. I think I've drilled it into everyone's heads here how important video content truly is um, for social, for Instagram, TikTok, and now YouTube Shorts. The algorithms are favoring vertical video. It's really smart. It's really going to know what type of content is made for the platform itself. So making sure your content is video or is vertical and um, just adding that very professional and polished look and feel to your content is going to be important when going into 2024. Um, and just some stats here. So 1 billion hours of YouTube content are consumed per day. TikTok has 1.06 billion daily active users. And vertical, vertical videos make up over 60% of all worldwide video plays. So it's extremely important to be sharing video content on social and making sure that it is vertical. And I'll kick it over to Chris to talk about the edge. Yes, yeah, so the EGC edge, really, I would say the, the crown jewel of our data and analytics department here at the agency. Um, it has definitely evolved and have grown leaps and bounds since we initially launched it. Um, but at a kind of top line view, what is EGC edge? Um, it is a competitive analysis tool primarily, but layers in different areas of data that perhaps traditional tools do not have. So we're able to do that through our kind of um, very valuable data partnerships, as well as having proprietary data and technology of our own. And this allows us to first evaluate the landscape so we can customize um, the industry analysis to whatever your business is, where you're looking to grow, where you currently sit in the landscape and, and environment. 
Um, and then from here, we can really identify the key areas of growth. So perhaps create some call outs that you were not familiar with um, as far as industry trends and forecasts. So again, data and AI is, is definitely, I would say, ever present and growing. And there is so much data that can be at a marketer's fingertips today than there ever was previously. So it's really getting an understanding of Again, what data is out there and how you can best strategize um, to identify key areas of growth and also maximize ROI for different channels and budget planning. And then once we have an understanding of this kind of environment and layout through our first party data and also data relationships, we can then generate strategies. So this is where the 30 years of expertise at EGC Group comes into play. Um, because it really is creating ideas. The data itself isn't going to drive your business. It's more so what you do with it. So creating strategies that are tailored to your specific business to improve ROI, to kind of stay bulletproof in this ever-changing environment is, is definitely of utmost importance. And then it's also the partnership um, with us. So once we kind of see the insights and, and promote these different strategies with you, we would kind of help you on the execution end because that is really what a great partner does. And our clients definitely appreciate not just kind of a report, but understanding that you're really with the EGC Edge um, kind of budding a, a, a partnership and, and development. So um, the execution end is, is also really important because you want to kind of make all this wonderful data work for you and, and to really, again, have an active plan and strategy when it comes to media execution, um, as well as CRM and, and just any area of your business that you wish to grow. So it's kind of taking all the steps. So understanding what is out there, using this new data and technology, um, discovering advantages within the space and perhaps areas that are not taken advantage of by your competitors where you can get an edge on them, um, no pun intended, and then generating these strategies, which will lead you to success and then having an actionable game plan and to have someone with you every step of the way to um, execute this plan. So. EGC Edge is, is definitely um, kind of this full-fledged, holistic success plan, um, which starts with superior data and ends with marketing expertise and, and strategy um, and at dramatically lower costs than, I would say, industry standard because we're able to get the proprietary data at such a high value due to our longstanding relationships with our partners and, and data providers. So EGC Edge, um, could not feel more strongly about it. Definitely, um, if you're curious about it, you can reach out um, to EGC Group. Um, we have a form on our site that you can fill out or you can reach out to Nicole and myself directly um, to get your business started and to end the year strong. Amazing. All right, fantastic. Before we wrap, we'll have a quick Q&A segment. Um, please feel free. We see one question actually in the queue already uh, to drop any questions you may have and we will do uh, our best to answer them. So I will I will MC this. Um, we have a comment from uh, Christopher, uh, Christina. Um, there's a question about horizontal uh, video format uh, for YouTube versus, vi uh, versus vertical um, video format, and I guess which may be more effective uh, given our slide on video. Yes, that's a great question. So now that we have YouTube shorts, it is important to shoot videos vertically if they're under 60 seconds. So having a combination of both horizontal and vertical video strategy is truly very important for YouTube. Um, yeah, so I would probably do a mix of both on that platform specifically. Fantastic. Um, we also have another question. Uh, this one was submitted to us prior to the webinar, uh, but what is uh, the difference between a creator and a influencer? So the difference between a creator and an influencer, that's a great question. So creators help you create that UGC style video. That's that lifestyle content that really helps tell the brand story. It brings a lifestyle element to the brand, whereas uh, an influencer is more um, costly, right? So working with an influencer or ambassador costs a bit more um, and you, we typically work with them on, on a campaign basis. So you'll see their faces a few times um, within a campaign. Fantastic. Uh, and then I think we have uh, one more question. Um, how often do you suggest posting to uh, TikTok? So I guess the optimal cadence for that. 
That's a great question. Um, and I don't have an exact answer because I really truly think it depends on your industry, on your brand, um, how often you really want to be on the platform. For some brands, I would suggest posting once a day. If it's a beauty brand or something like that, really consistently posting on that platform is going to help you with that reach, that engagement. Um, so the more, the better. I know that's probably not the question you want to hear, but the more that you can post video content and post it on TikTok, the better. And you can always repurpose that to Instagram and to YouTube shorts and Facebook. So you can really get the bang, the most bang out of your buck. Fantastic. Um, we have a, another question submitted. Uh, this one I may have Nicole answer. Uh, what strategy would you recommend for a budget that could fluctuate quarterly or a volatile industry such as a mortgage industry? That's a great question. So, and, you know, we are seeing, we do have several financial clients in, you know, dealing with all the mortgage changes, but we do know that there's still demand. There's a lot of people looking for answers and looking for products. Um, you know, our advice is to be consistent, be present, um, you know, especially with mortgages, lower funnel performance-based marketing is really critical because you've got people rate shopping, searching. Um, so for those clients, you know, our performance media, Google Meta um, is kind of like the mainstays of those marketing budgets along with above the line. Um, and that it it actually isn't came up yesterday in the conversation with the client of, um, you know, when, do you reinvest in above the line, um, you know, or do you, in times like these, shuffle all your, your marketing dollars to lower funnel, but you still need that awareness. You still need that consistency, um, TV, broadcast, all those mediums that allow for storytelling. When you fall off completely there, brands feel it. So, you know, being consistent and being present even in the traditional channels still still makes sense fantastic and it looks like we'll we'll do one more question before we wrap so we have a question saying are photos still relevant on social media or is video king <laughs> i love this one um i will say video is definitely king i do think photos are important having a good mix of content is necessary, especially on Instagram, LinkedIn. I think having a good mix is important, but I will say video is what's going to move the needle for you. It's what's going to get the most eyeballs on your content, help with that reach. Um, it's going to reach outside of your current followers more than a photo would. So I would really try and incorporate a lot of video content in your social media strategy while still having a healthy mix of photo content, stories, um, all of that good stuff. Fantastic. All right, before I pass over to Nicole to wrap, I just wanna say that we do plan to record this webinar and upload it on our channels and website. So if you do like what you see, you are more than willing to watch this again, uh, like, comment, share, uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, and we hope to see you in our next event, but I will pass it over to Nicole to conclude things. I think Max, you just did a great job wrapping, <laughs> but <laughs> everything Max said, everything Chris said about the edge, please, you know, reach out to us and we're here to kind of help everyone, you know, our, make informed decisions with regard to marketing going forward, 2024 planning. Um, we're here for you. So please reach out to us. And uh, thanks to my fellow panelists. Thanks everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. yeah.